All right, y'all, what's going on? Welcome to Tribe by Noir. For those of you who are new to the channel, I talk about fitness, plant-based nutrition, and self-development, mindset coaching type stuff, right? And all of this is the three pillars to work on in order to become the most powerful version of yourself. All right, welcome to the discussion, people, on muscle mass building and the approach you're going to be taking and all the things that we need to factor into our training style in order to effectively reach the goal of lean mass gain. All right, so first off to start, I'm going to be talking about load or intensity. This is in regards to the amount of weight that you put on the bar or the amount of weight that you use in general, right? And so now there's three different methods that you can go. Now, let's say if you're doing a cutting phase, you wouldn't really be focused on trying to lift as much weight as possible. You'd be more focused on, you know, that metabolic response that you get from the body, right? Where you have a healthy load, but you keep your heart rate up, right? Where you really have the body working that way, creating a thermogenic response in the body. Whereas uh, in a strength style program, it's all about slapping plates on each side of the bar, trying to become your strongest in each set. But in a hypertrophy style program, you need a healthy balance between the amount of weight that you lift and the amount of training volume that you do. But there's a priority on training volume. So you wouldn't try to just tack on as much weight onto the bar as you can. And the reason for that is because the heavier you lift, the more rest time and rest days you need. And if you need more time for rest, that means you won't be able to be getting in as much training volume as it takes to actually pack on muscle mass. So, rather than working at 80 and 95% of your one rep max, or working at 40 or 50% of your one rep max, we're gonna be somewhere in the middle working with weights that are in between 60 and 80% of your one rep max, mostly working at 70%, right? Another way to look at it is if you don't have your one rep max for that specific exercise, well, it could be 70% of your RPE, right? Which is rate of perceived exertion. If that sounds complicated, well, just pick a weight that feels like a seven on a scale of one to 10. Simple as it gets. Now we reach training volume, and this is where the real focus is in regard to putting on muscle mass, right? How many sets and reps we do per workout, per week, and overall for the entire program, right? So the progressive overload lies in the training volume in hypertrophy style programs. Now, progressive overload is basically just the increased challenge from day to day and week to week and that challenge creates the desired result so if you're trying to get stronger the progressive overload would be to tack on more weight to the bar either set to set training day to training day or week to week however you decide to structure your training program for a cutting phase program maybe you want to take less rest time in between sets in order to challenge yourself uh, cardiovascularly and, and endurance wise in general. But in terms of hypertrophy training, we want to be able to tack on more and more reps training day to training day and week to week. This is where the progressive overload comes into play so that we can pack on some real muscle mass. Now we can do this by adding a rep to each set week to week. So for example, week one, back squat, four sets, six reps. Week two, seven reps, four sets. Week three, eight reps, four sets. Just tacking on one rep to each set, that's a means of progressive overload. Now we can do it in an auto-regulated way, where we do three or four sets, but on the last set, we go for broke and do as many reps as you possibly can. So maybe week one, you get eight reps. Week two, you get nine or maybe even 10. 
in week three, maybe you get 10 or 11. And so this works twofold. This is a symbol that you're getting stronger and packing on more muscle mass. Okay, so we talked about the basics of the amount of reps that we're doing per set, right? We talked about the basics of rep range, and now we got to get into the amount of sets that we do. Not just the amount of sets per exercise or training day, but the amount of sets that we do from week to week, right? Collectively on a macro scale. So you can either do eight sets on a specific muscle group per week, or you can do 16, let's say. So let's say you did one chest exercise for four sets twice a week. That would be eight sets. But if you did two chest exercises for four sets twice a week, that would be 16. It's a very easy way to double that up, and it's very effective because when you double up the amount of sets that you do, you double up the amount of reps that you do. And this is a way of getting that hypertrophy response. That's the way of getting that muscle mass increase in a faster time period because you're challenging that muscle group enough for it to respond. Now, depending on where you are in your, in your, uh, in your training life, right, how long you've been training, this will determine how many sets you need to do. So if you're new and you're, let's say you're level one, maybe you only need uh, 10 or 12 sets. 14 sets, right? But if you're at level two or three, maybe you need 16, 18, 20 sets, right? So it really depends on where you are, how much experience you have, and that will determine how many sets you should be doing. But it's very important to track how many reps and how many sets you're doing because this basically shows you a trend of what's working and what's not working, right? So if you're doing 12 sets a week and you grew a little bit, but really not so much, or maybe you didn't grow at all, then you know, okay, 12 sets didn't really work so well. Let's try 14 sets. Let's try 16, right? And so you can just tweak the training volume until you find something that your body responds to. So all you're really doing is setting a baseline and working from there to see what gives you the result that you're looking for. And that's why programming and calculating these things is so important. Now as far as progressive overload collectively for sets and reps, you may have to do a longer training program. So let's say if you're level one or you're level two in your training, right? You're in your first year of training or your second year of training. Your training programs may be, on average, four weeks long, where you have three weeks of ramping up that progressive overload, and then the fourth week, you take 30% off of your training volume and intensity altogether in order to maximize recovery, and then you can ramp back up again for another three weeks. But after a while, this stops working. And so a way to fix this is you have a six week or an eight week phase program. So rather than deloading after the third week, maybe you deload after the fifth week or the sixth week, right? You can just push it back a little bit. And so you can, you can reach a bit further. So if you're tacking on one rep a week, rather than tacking on three reps by the end of the third week and then deloading, you can tack on a fourth and a fifth and even a sixth rep and really challenge yourself with those reps. And this will create a response in the body that will definitely pack on muscle mass. Of course, as long as you're eating enough and getting enough protein in your diet. All right, now check this out. Now, one of the main problems you have with a hypertrophy style program is the fact that it becomes time consuming. And it becomes time consuming, you're looking at your clock and you gotta get out of the gym. So yeah, hurry up. So certain things, smaller muscle groups, may get neglected because of this. I don't know if you've experienced this, but you know what? If you're squatting and deadlifting and doing the lunges and, and you know and the, the leg extensions, whatever the case is, if you got to train your calves and you're already an hour into your workout 
and you gotta leave because you gotta go to work or whatever the case is. So maybe you say, you know what, I'll catch calves some other time. Maybe I'll do calves at home or something on the steps or whatever the case is, right? Because you're just maxed out on your time. And so a lot of the times what happens is we develop muscular imbalances because the smaller muscle groups get left behind. Smaller muscle groups like your traps, your side delts, right? Your rear delts, you know, things like biceps and triceps for some people, calves, like I said, right? Glute medius, little, little muscles that's easy to forget about because they're not incorporated into the complex movements like the deadlift and the bench press, the overhead press, and the rows and the lat pulls down, pull downs, etc. right? And so one really intelligent strategy to use is a superset. This is basically where you take two exercises and you do them back to back with little to no rest time in between them, okay? And then you rest maybe for 30 or 60 or even 90 seconds in between each superset. So an example of this would be you bench press and then you pick up some dumbbells and you do curls or lateral raises, right? And all you're doing is you're working a smaller muscle that's not really directly involved in the primary exercise you were just doing. Right? So your primary exercise would be for the bigger muscle group and the exercise you do right after that would be for a smaller one. So you can bench press and superset that with lateral raises like I said or bicep curls or let's say you're squatting. You can do leg curls right after you squat. And that works very well because your hamstrings are not really utilized so much while you're squatting. Another example of this would be hip bridges and leg extensions or hip bridges and leg curls, right? There's a lot of different examples and ways that you can go about this, but this will save you a lot of time in the gym and you'll grow evenly. You won't have any lagging muscles and things like that. And if you do have muscles that you need to focus on more so, then you can adjust accordingly, right? Get, get more farmer's carries or shrugs in there or lateral raises or work on those calves if you're like me and struggle to grow your calves because you've always had skinny legs, right? Okay, so in regards to the rep scheme in the superset, you got the exercise that targets the larger muscle group and you superset that with an exercise that targets a smaller muscle group. And so the larger muscle group requires a heavier load where you're working in between six and eight reps or eight and 12 reps, as an example. But the smaller muscle group, that smaller muscle, like a bicep, right, or biceps, or side delts, or calves, right, these require more reps. So you're not really gonna see much growth out of doing six reps on bicep curls or lateral raises, right? They respond very well to high reps where you're doing 12 to 16 reps or 16 to 20 reps. Really getting that blood flow in there and getting that, getting that training volume in there. Another thing is, is that these smaller muscles, they recover a lot quicker. So you can train them a lot more and you can train them a lot harder with little consequence because training these muscles hard is not gonna burn out your nervous system. So don't worry about holding back on these muscle groups. Training splits. All right, training splits. So now my top two would either be legs, push, pull, or an upper lower split. Now I'll start with the legs, push, pull. Legs, push, pull is basically where your first day would be where you train lower body. Squatting, deadlifting, leg pressing, hip bridging, lunging, all that type of stuff, right? Training those quads, hamstrings, glutes, and calves. Now, day two would be where you're training all the pushing movements, all of those pressing muscles, right? Your front delts, your side delts, your biceps, your chest, and even your abs, right? Basically training all the muscles that are responsible for these pushing movements. And then the third day would be where you train back. Horizontal pulling, vertical pulling, right? Rows, pull downs, reverse flies, all that type of stuff. Hitting your trapezes, your rhomboids, your rear delts, your lats, right? And even your lower and mid back muscles. Basically that whole posterior chain of your upper body. 
Now, this works very well. This is a very good training split for somebody in their first year of training. And so what I would add on top of that is you really want to strive for a minimum of three training days, but optimally you want to go for at least four or five. And so the fourth and the fifth workout would be legs and back because legs and back are your larger muscle groups. And these larger muscle groups require way more training volume. And these are the muscle groups that really bring your physique together. You get some nice thick developed legs and a nice wide and thick developed back and that'll give you that X frame, right? So now if you only have four days to train, then you can pick one. Ladies, you may wanna train your legs twice a week where maybe that second time you put more of an emphasis on developing your glutes and your hamstrings, right? Fellas, that second, that, that fourth training day, you may wanna pick back. And an added bonus to training back twice a week is improving your posture. So if you're up here and your shoulders are forward and you got this going on here and your neck is jutted forward, if you can strengthen all of those muscles that pull your shoulders back, that bring that chin back and improve your posture, this is really gonna bring your physique together. So as your waist shrinks and your lats broaden out, this is definitely gonna create that V taper that people want as far as developing your physique. But obviously, I would advise five days for the truly dedicated where you're hitting legs and back twice a week. Now the upper lower split, this is basically where one training day is lower body and another is all upper body. And you alternate between the two. All right, so typically what this looks like is four training days. And the fifth training day could be accessory stuff that you may need to work on a little bit more, right? Or maybe you even want to do some cardio conditioning training or whatever the case is, depending on your personal goals. And so the difference here would be you can have a workout A and a workout B. Workout A would be lower body because I always prioritize lower body because it is your larger muscle group, which takes the most effort to build. And then workout B would be upper body, where you're hitting chest, shoulders, and back, and arms. It's a lot, but you can do it, especially with that superset routine. Now, you can do an A and a B, or you can do uh, A, B, C, and D. So maybe your first lower body day puts an emphasis on developing your quadriceps. And then the second lower body day puts an emphasis on developing glutes and hamstrings, right? And then as far as the upper body day, right, where you can have a B and a D, whereas workout B for upper body may focus more on chest and shoulders, and then workout D may focus, <coughs> excuse me, may focus more so on back exercises, right? So you can really play around with it, tailor it, and see what works for you or of course follow what I laid out in Tribe Solid. So you take all of these methods, combine them all together, and you got yourself a solid hypertrophy style training program or a Tribe Solid hypertrophy style training program. All right, I'm gonna give you a big shout out for sticking with me for the entire video. If you found this information helpful and you wanna follow my methods to reach your ideal physique, whether that be to cut body fat, build muscle mass, strength, all that type of stuff, and you wanna follow my methods, what I want you to do is click the link below in the description to get a free consultation with me and we can get together and talk about your goals personally and take the next step, either through phone or web chat. All right, so go ahead and click that link and I will talk to you soon.